So people go to Rikers Island accused of breaking the law, but what's making headlines now is the lawlessness that exists inside the jail. Here we go again. In an exclusive interview with PIX alum Ziana Harry from his hospital bed at the Bellevue Prison Ward, inmate Tyreef Kelly says he was beaten within an inch of his life, claims correction officers did nothing to protect him. Take a listen. I'm seeing the walls closing on me. I understand that, that Mr. Kelly was um, tortured for roughly three days. Um, he was taken, beaten in all kinds of ways and, and is, is broken in just about every part of his body. The crisis on Rikers Island surged during the pandemic and prompted 200 inmates to stage a hunger strike which is now in its seventh day. New York Times investigative reporter Jan Ransom has been following the developments on Rikers Island closely, and she joins us this morning with a look at what exactly is going on inside the jail complex. Good to see you, Jan. Thanks for coming back. Thank you for having me. Really, really important reporting that you did this week in the New York Times. You know, and Tyreef Kelly, just one of the cases of inmates getting brutalized in Rikers Island, right? So many. You've uncovered even more evidence of gang members running parts of the jail, releasing some of the videos in your article that are just astonishing to see what's happening inside. Tell us about it. Sure. Um, so in addition to obtaining videos, I also interviewed a young man who was directly impacted by being housed in an area that's predominantly run by gangs. Mm -hmm. um, some of these gang members have been, you know, controlling whether or not people eat, get water, recreation, um, who gets to live with them. But perhaps among the most disturbing things we found was in this particular housing area, a gang leader was forcing other detainees to fight one another, uh, resulting in some of them being seriously injured. Yeah, and the scary thing is, I mean, it's so bad that a Manhattan Supreme Court judge ordered the release of an inmate who was seriously injured in that fight club match. So gang leaders pitting inmates against each other. Has a ruling like this ever happened before? Um, I can't say it's never happened, but it is really rare. Um, in fact, you know, the judge found that the Department of Correction, Correction was incapable of keeping this young man safe. And so, you know, this ruling could have broader implications for other detainees who, you know, make similar claims. Yeah, you know, I, I've covered Rikers for quite some time when I was a reporter on the streets, and, and we've seen the fights inside the jail. And the question is always, <laughs> where are the correction officers during this, right? And specifically, these fight club matches in the videos that you've obtained, where are the correction officers, and should they be held accountable here? Totally. So, I mean, in the video, you can see a correction officer literally watching what is happening. Uh, the officer does not intervene. She does not call for backup. Um, in addition to her, there's an officer in what's called a control um, station. This is an officer who can oversee the housing area as well. That person does not intervene either. Um, in fact, the person I interviewed who was forced to participate in this fight club said that at times the officers would flick the lights on and off to either warn that supervisors were in the area or that they were too loud and needed to calm it down. In this video, though, is it is she overrun? What's happening here? So in this video, uh, the detainee is uh, about to be attacked by um, a group of other detainees with knives. Um, this officer is by herself, and that's something that we've been seeing a lot yeah. of now, especially since the start of pandemic, where there's been high rates of officer absenteeism. This is something that should not be happening. This officer should not be alone. Um, and it takes entirely too long, as you can see, um, for an officer to open the gate and allow uh, this guard and the detainee to go to safety. Um, this is not something that should have been happening. But can you blame the lack of having security there just based on COVID, you know, just the fact that the people aren't even there for, to do their jobs? Yeah, I don't think you can really just blame it on that. Or was this happening long before? Right, and I'm glad you asked that. I mean, you know, we found that a lot of the problems are rooted in the way that the Department of Correction has been deploying people on Rikers Island for decades. And so once COVID hit, we just saw all of that just sort of blow up mm -hmm. um, and cause the problems that we're seeing where we have um, housing units that are either completely unmanned or understaffed. Yeah, you know. So this has been decades in the making. Yeah, it has been decades in the making. And I actually feel for that sole correction officer who's there by herself in that one instance, because that must have been a terrifying experience. But, you know, I don't know what the answer is here, Jan, but 200 inmates 
in, in a day seven of a hunger strike now. Newly appointed Correction Commissioner Louis Molina supposedly met with inmates, right? Claims there's no hunger strike. So what's the, can you set the record straight? What's happening? <laughs> Sure. Um, so my colleague has been covering this extensively and, you know, he found that there is a hunger strike. Uh, the detainees are not eating uh, food delivered by the Department of Correction. They have been eating commissary food. But I think what's important here is that they're trying to bring attention to what are really serious concerns here. You have people who don't have access to medical care, right. mental health care, medication, um, have not been uh, outside for weeks or months. Um, all of this coming off of a year that was particularly deadly for people in custody. 16 deaths, the highest since 2013. Um, people genuinely fear for their lives. And that's why those detainees are doing that. They're trying to highlight what is a very serious emergency. Yeah, completely inhumane. Jan Ransom, really important reporting that you've done. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course. All right. Thank you, Jan.